Hey everybody, Sensei Matt Dorsey here in my home dojo today, and uh, happy Memorial Day weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. Our sessions for this week, um, our classes are going to be covering for your level Nahanchi Kata, some kicking techniques, working more on the nunchucks, uh, and some other uh, special skills and challenges. So I hope you're ready for it. Um, if you uh, can grab your hand pad, make sure you have that ready, and of course your nunchucks as well. All right. We're going to get things started today with our bowing in. Let's do our normal bow in just like we do at the dojo. Ready? Show me focus and respect. And then say, that's right, feet apart, student creed number one. I intend to develop myself in a positive manner and to avoid anything that would reduce my mental growth and my physical health. Take your sparring stance. Remember, say the student creed with energy and intensity. Ready? Number two. I intend to develop self-discipline in order to bring out the best in myself and others. And hold out your punch, number three. I intend to use what I learn in class constructively and offensively to help myself and my community and never to be abusive or offensive. And focus and respect. All right, cool. All right, we're ready to get started today. And I'm going to have you guys do a little bit of warming up. Uh, just start by taking your hand pad. And you're going to put that on the floor. I want you to do your jump side to side with both feet, up and over side to side. So ready, put your pad down. Good, stand on one side of it and go for 20 jumps over side to side. Let me see, ready, go, one, two, keep going, count them to yourself. Try to move both feet at the same time. Keep going, keep going. That's right, when you get to 20, you are done and stop all right good job if you need a little more time take your time to do that and then get back to the video here when you're ready all right here's another challenge for you and this one is a balance challenge as well as um, for your core and your center so i want you to pick up one leg you can tuck your foot behind your knee if you want or you can just lift it up straight all right put one hand out for a punch and give it 20 punches. Ready, one, two, three, four, five. Not as easy as you think, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, whew, that was tough. I hope you did it. All right, now pick up the other leg and shoot for 20 that way. Ready, 20 punches and go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If your foot hits the ground, just pick it right back up. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, good job. 20 punches that way. All right, one more exercise to warm up with. And this is doing a straight squat. And you've done this before many times in class. We'll often do a squat and then a front kick. This time we'll just change it up. We'll change up the kick to a side kick. So from your guard position, feet are even, squat all the way down, nice low squat, and then come up, side kick. And then squat, and now the other way, side kick. Good, ready, keep going, 30 seconds. Squat and kick, squat and kick, side kicks. Come on, keep it up, work those legs. Squat down nice and low, nice and low. And then back up, keep your guard up, shoot that kick. Squat down nice and low. Come on, a few more seconds. You can do it. Keep it up. Keep it up, a couple more. Come on, come on, and stop. All right, good work. You just did your warm up with some exercises and your balance and your core strength. So, uh, so good going. Now we're gonna get into our kicks and we're working on our crescent kicks this month. And you should be familiar with a few different types of crescent kicks. So take a sparring stance with me. Good. And the first one is the back leg, the outside crescent kick. Let's do it three times. Ready? One. That's it. Make a good arc. Two. That's it. And three. Nice. Switch legs. Crescent kick. One. Two. And three. Good. All right. Switch legs. Now we're doing our back leg inside crescent kick. So that's the one that comes across the body and then around. So follow with me. Ready? One, 
That's the crescent kick. Two. And three. Good work. Switch legs. Back leg inside crescent. Ready? One. Two. And three. Nice. All right. Switch legs. Now we're going to do that inside crescent again, but this time with the front leg. So you start by stepping up. So I'm going to go on a little bit of an angle so you can see. I step up and shoot the kick with the front leg. Ready? One. Good. Make a good arc on it. Two. That's it. Three. Switch legs. Ready? One. That's it. Two. And three. And stop. All right, good. Now, you've probably been working on some combinations with your kicks as well, with the crescent kicks. So let's do a combination with the front leg crescent and then add the roundhouse kick from the back leg after it. So one leg for the crescent kick, other leg for the round kick. Do it with me. Step up, crescent, and then the other leg round kick. Good. Again, ready? Two. Crescent, round kick. Good. And three. Good work. Switch legs. Front crescent, back round kick. One. That's it. Two. Good. Let's see if you can do it faster than me. Ready? Three. All right. Good job. All right. Now, let's do our uh, crescent kick this time with a spin first. Now, most of you have done a spinning hook kick or a spinning back kick. So you know the idea of doing your spin, but this time we're doing with the crescent kick. So from a sparring stance, it's our back leg that's gonna execute the kick. So tap your back leg. Now turn your feet so they point to the back. Turn your head and your hands so you're coming around to the front and then come through crescent kick with that back leg. Again, turn, look, crescent, and around. Good, let me see you again. Ready, turn your feet, turn your head and your hands, crescent. Good, if you can put it all together, do it three more times. Keep your balance in between. Keep going, spin, good. Remember to keep your guard up and to turn your head to the side all the way around when you're doing your kick. All right, did you do it three more times? Great. Let's go into it with the other leg this time. So from your balance and guard position, turn your feet, your head and your hands, get so you can see behind you, you have to spot that opponent. And then crescent kick around. Ready? Nice and smooth. Go. Good. Get your balance back if you lose it. Ready, go. And go. Good. All right. Nicely done. So that's your spinning crescent kick. And that can be done in some combinations. Let's try a combination with a back leg round kick first and then into a spinning crescent kick. So with me, back leg, round kick, and turn as you're setting it down. Then turn your head and crescent kick as you come around. All right, back to the position again. Try to make a good connection between the two kicks. The first kick sets you up for the second kick. Ready, go. Kick, kick, yes. All right, try it again. Round kick, crescent kick with the spin. Good, and again, round kick, spinning crescent kick. All right, switch legs. Same thing, back leg, round kick. Get your balance when you come down and now pick up a crescent kick when you come around. Ready? Round kick, crescent kick. And again, round kick, crescent kick. All right, good. Spinning crescent kick is a tough one. So if you're a little off balance, that's normal. Sometimes practice it by itself. Sometimes put it together in combination. Now, the spinning crescent kick is a lead in to the next kick, which we call the Chinese crescent kick, or sometimes it's called a tornado kick. 
that kick begins with a turn of your body, picking up the leg, and then crescent kick around with the other leg. So you turn your body, and it looks like you're starting a, a spinning crescent kick. So your knee comes up. But as it comes around, you don't kick it out, the other leg comes around. So you're hopping right off of it. So it's a turn, spin, and crescent kick around. That one wasn't so good. Let me see if I can get a better one. Ready? Try it with me. Turn, one, two, just like that. All right, do it a few times on your own. Spin, Chinese crescent kick. Go ahead. Good, do it a couple more times. Keep your balance. All right, and stop. All right, now let's go into the uh, spinning crescent on the other side, or the Chinese crescent, I should say, on the other side. So again, you start with a turn, turn your body, pick up your knee, and then hop around so your other leg does the outside crescent. Give that one a try on that side. Start with a spin crescent, and then an outside crescent from there. Go ahead, do it a couple more times. That one's not an easy one either. And you need a lot of room around you to do it. So take your time to do it right, okay? Take your time. All right, and stop. All right, we're gonna move on. Nice job on your kicks. We're gonna go to our nunchucks now, your nunchucks. Are you ready for those? Go ahead and grab your double nunchucks. If you only have one nunchuck, do the moves as best you can with one, then do it with the other one. But try to get your two nunchucks. If you need to uh, contact your sensei to uh, get that second pair, make sure you let them know that you need them. All right, you know the side spins, and you know the backward side spins. Good, and you know catching over and under your arms for the double snaps, right? We've been doing those before. I'll bet you're pretty good at the double snaps and these uh, rapid fire strikes as well. Good. All right, now a few different types of figure eights. The outside figure eights where they're both going at the same time. Their hands are not crisscrossing though. That's the outside double figure eights. Good. All right, the next one is the parallel or side-by-side -side figure eight. So you start under your shoulder and you shoot them out to one side and then you keep them moving at the same time, parallel, side-by-side. -side. Again, the hands are not crossing on this one. They're just passing side-by-side, -side. good. And stop. All right, the other type of figure eight is the crossing figure eights where your hands crisscross and one hand's on top for the first time, your other hand's on top for the second time. So you start underneath here, and as soon as you shoot them out, cross your hands, and then pull them apart. Crisscross and double figure eights. To get the timing right so they don't hit each other, that takes a little bit of practice, and so that you don't hit your body very much either. It should be right on the side of your body, very little touching, if at all. That's the double figure eights crisscrossing. Good, and catch. All right, I hope you're good at those. Now there's one more to do, and it's also a crisscrossing figure eight, but instead of the nunchucks kind of moving at the same time, it's more of a pattern like we do with the sticks. Remember with the sticks, when we follow through one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You might even want to pick up your sticks and practice with that first because you can do the same pattern with your nunchucks by starting them both on the same side and you go one, two, three. And then you go to the other side, one, two, three. Now when we're stopping it like this, it doesn't look like it's very smooth, but that's the way to practice. You start with your hand that's on top and that comes across, then your other one comes across and then this one comes on. 
across, across, under. But now we won't stop in between. We'll keep it going. And you'll try to keep them moving smoothly like this. So it's the same pattern. It's just no stopping. Try to make each nunchuck move smoothly. And they're going side by side. You can see it's making a double circle. But they're not moving at the same time. One's following the other one. So this way. Yes. Good. And remember to start, start under one shoulder and over the other one. The one on top goes first and it comes back up. The other one makes a circle out and comes down and the other one circles and comes under. It looks like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Some of you will pick it up right away. Some of you will take a little bit of practice. But now just don't stop in between. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. Hey, with a little practice, you'll master it. Don't worry. And if you're having a little trouble with it, ask your sensei during your private lessons. Good. All right. So that's another type of double figure eight to add to your current skills. All right. I'd like us to shift for a moment to. Uh, go back to single nunchuck because there's a skill with the single nunchucks that I want you to uh, really get down. And that's switching the grip from what we call a regular grip to a reverse grip. That's when you're holding it this way where the string is coming down from the bottom of your hand. Usually the string is near the, coming at the top of your hand. But for a reverse grip, it goes here. Now the way to do a reverse grip is to hold it in the normal grip but just turn your stick so it's pointed down. Now, give the nunchuck a spin so it goes over the back of your hand. The string, as you can see, is over the back of my hand. And when it gets to that position, I'll let go of the stick I was holding, and I'll just flip my hand around to catch the other one. Now, I'm not there yet because the string is still there. I have to swing it around. Hey, there we go. Now I'm in the reverse grip. Let's do that again. So start in a normal grip. And hold it a little closer to the string, not so much in the middle of the nunchucks like we usually tell you, but for this skill, it's better to hold it up closer to the string. So you point it down and you spin so the string goes over the back of your hand. Now you let go of one stick and you switch your hand around to catch the other one. And then continue the flip and then you're back to a reverse grip. It should be done in one motion, around and catch. Like that. Around and catch. So your hand lets go and, and uh, loses one nunchuck and catches the other right when it spins around. Good. Now you're probably figuring out that, hey, if I go the opposite way, I can get it back to the other side. You're right. And that's what we do here. We're going to swing the nunchuck so the string goes over the back of the hand. And now I switch back and I catch it this way and flip it back. So I go from a regular grip to a reverse grip. And then I go from a reverse grip back to a regular grip. Around and back. Right, you'll drop it a few times, don't worry. That's okay, that's part of the learning process. I dropped it many times learning how to do this, and I still drop it sometimes. Around and catch. Around and catch. Good, and it's something maybe you can learn to do with both hands so that you feel comfortable to switch to a reverse grip on your left hand or on your right hand, either way. And it should be able to spin easily like this and switch it to the grip, other grip, and then bring it back to the normal grip again. All right, so that's a special challenge for you uh, to work on with your nunchuck skills. But don't put your nunchucks away too far. We're gonna to go to our cot in a minute, but we're gonna use the nunchuck a little bit later for a special challenge. So here we go. Our kata today that we're working is our Nahanshi kata. And uh, you've all been through it. I think you've been through it to the end. And uh, you know that once you learn the first half, then the second half is just a repeat of it on the opposite side. So let's do Nahanshi kata together, kind of step by step, so you can follow along with me. Yasume, it's good. Great. Hajime. Kata nahanshi. Ready with both hands open and press down. Look. 
One, two, three, four, five, look, six, seven, eight. Step over and kick, nine, ten. On, two, and hit. Look to the side, avoid, and block. Look to the other side, avoid, and hit. Remember that hand should be about head height. Then drop your hands, avoid, and hit. Double punch. Are you keeping in a hanchi stance? Pay attention. Every time you lift up your foot and you set it back down, make sure you're in the hanchi stance. Ready? Block. Elbow. Down. Look. Avoid. Downward. Spear. Step over and kick. Block up. Block down. Elbow. Remember those knuckles are underneath there. And snap. Look to the side. Avoid the sweep. Block it back. Other side. And hit. Drop the hands, look, avoid the sweep, and double. Hey! And then back. Good. Are you keeping your good Nahanchi stance? Remember that those pigeon toed feet, or the toes should be turned inward. I don't know why it's called pigeon toed. Maybe pigeons walk that way. I'm not sure. But this is what they call it. The toes are turned inward. That's what makes it the Nahanchi stance. And it should tighten up your leg muscles at the same time. Keep it strong in your stance position. So every time you make your stance with this kata, you're in Nahanchi stance. All right, we're gonna do the kata again, and this time I really want you to emphasize two things. First, putting some energy into your moves. It's one thing knowing the moves, it's another thing really putting your energy into it, some intensity behind it. Imagine blocking the opponent, pulling them in, hitting with the elbow, blocking their kick stabbing at them, all the moves that you're doing as self-defense moves. You've got to make the kata come alive and feel like you're really doing self-defense to protect yourself. So I want to see that intensity up there. And something that goes along with that is good eye contact. That means that you turn your head to see your opponent before you do a move. You wouldn't want to do your moves here and do your down block there where you can even see them. You have to turn your head first and then do your down block. So make sure you turn your head before you do the move. It's always head, hands, block, or head, hands, strike. Head goes first all the time. You have to see your opponent first. So let's pay attention to it as we go through the kata this time. Ready? Yazume. Kutsuke. Rek. Hajime. Kata. Nahanchi. Ready. At this point right now, your eyes are still forward until you decide now it's time to move. And now the first thing that goes is your head. And then step, set, and block. And then hit. And now at this point, when your hands start to go down, you look the other way so you can see what's happening on that side. Avoiding the sweep, down block them, and spear hand. Now keep your eyes to the side there. Don't look forward yet. Step over and kick. And now look forward. Block up, block down, elbow, hit. Look to the side now, and avoid. And block that person. Look all the way to the other side, because they're coming on that side. They're trying to sweep your leg. You avoid it, and you block them. Then your hands come down. You look, and you avoid on the other side, and you strike. Now keep your eyes there, because now we're still blocking on that side and elbowing over there. And as our hands come back to our hip, we look the other way. So we repeat the pattern here. Avoid, down block, spear. Step over and kick. Now look to the front. Up block and down. Elbow and hip. All those moves, you're looking straight ahead. Look to the side. Avoid the sweep. Block and back. I hope you're putting more energy into it now, too. Look. Avoid. Hit. Good. Hands down. Look. Avoid. And give that key eye like you mean it. Ready, go. Eyes. And then back. And finish the kata with the proper bow and the proper movement. All right, so if you would like to continue to practice the kata like this, rewind this part, play it back again so that you can review it, get better and better at turning your head quickly and putting your intensity behind your kata movements. All right, we're getting ready to finish up, and I told you we're going to use the nunchuck again. And this time, I just want you to have one nunchuck or one set. It's two sticks together. And this move is for speed and focus to be able to do this move quickly and uh, successfully you're going to start 
holding your nunchuck like this out in front and your other hands at your side. I'm gonna punch this hand out like a straight punch, but I'm gonna catch the nunchuck because I'm, this hand that's holding it is gonna let go. So it's gonna go quick like this, right out there. I don't want it to fall down. You have to go quickly. So you open your hand here and you make a quick snap. Now don't throw it up in the air, that's different. All right, right now we're just trying to move it as quickly as we can to catch it. Open the hand and, and punch. Oh, I only got one stick that time. That's okay, it didn't fall. Oh, I lost it that time. All right, I hope you can do it. Go ahead and try it a few more times. Pull that nunchuck out and a quick switch to catch. A quick switch to catch. It's like a fast punch. Do it a few more times. Maybe try doing it 10 times and count how many times you're successful. Did you get it eight out of 10 times? Did you get it six out of 10 times? Well, whatever it is, keep trying to improve it. If you're getting it 10 out of 10, hey, that's great. You're going super fast. But making a mistake, dropping them sometimes, that's part of the practice too. Remember, sometimes a failure is your best teacher. Don't ever look at a failure as a setback. Look at any failure as an opportunity to learn because that's really what it's all about. Hey, you guys are great karate students. I know you've been working hard with me today. I know you're doing your special lessons with your senseis and some of you are coming to the uh, Zoom live classes that we're doing as well. Well, that's fantastic. You're keeping up your karate training. I can't wait to see you back at your dojo. Hopefully that'll be coming up soon and uh, we'll be able to teach your, your regular classes for those that are ready to come back into the dojo. But in the meantime, you can train at home. You can be your own sensei by pushing yourself, by challenging yourself, by being disciplined. Hey, there are times when you don't feel like practicing. There's times I don't feel like practicing. It's okay, but you know what? Just because you don't feel that way doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You should still do it anyway. It's okay to not want to do it. It's just not okay to not do it. Do it anyway. That's working through the discipline, challenging yourself, and saying, hey, it's not easy, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's what makes a champion. That's what makes a black belt. So keep up the great work. Keep working on those challenges, the katas, the kicks, the nunchucks, all the skills we've been working on. We'll see you in class again soon. Give me your focused position and give a bow of respect. And then say, good, you're welcome. And let's do our black belt principles. As a dedicated student of the martial arts, I will live by the principles of black belt, honesty, courtesy, integrity, self-control, perseverance, and indomitable spirit. What kind of school is this? This is a black belt school. That's right. Always have that black belt attitude. Keep training towards the black belt. I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work. Do this class maybe two or three times during the week and your private lesson as well. See you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.